This five-minute documentary is about the life and work of Napoleon Bonaparte Broward. No, that's not him up there, that's me, portraying one of the most colorful characters to sit in the governor's chair in Florida. Yes, he was a segregationist in a state that was segregationist up until the early 1960s, who believed the Everglades was swampland and wanted to develop it just as they had developed the city of Chicago some 60 years earlier. Broward was a man of ambition and action who fought to transform Florida by draining and reclaiming vast wetlands of the Everglades for agricultural and homestead development. His efforts to change the landscape of South Florida were driven by his belief that the state's economy could be transformed through the drainage and reclamation of the Everglades. Broward was born on April 19, 1857, outside of Jacksonville, Florida. He led an adventurous early life as a sailor, steamboat captain, and lawman, serving for several years as the sheriff of Duval County, and commonly carried with him a set of brass knuckles and a sawed-off shotgun. Broward was a leading figure in Duval Democratic politics when he was a leader of the progressive or straight-out faction of the Democrats who opposed the influence of corporations, especially railroads, in Florida politics. Broward became a statewide and even nationally recognized name in 1896 when he captained a large tugboat named the Three Friends on gun running, or as they called it back then, filibustering voyages to Cuba in support of the revolution against Spain. Broward made 10 trips to Cuba, carrying arms, ammunition, and fighters. Each one a story in itself. Now keep in mind, the Three Friends had to first run the gauntlet of U.S. patrol ships before even entering Cuban waters. And then they had to deal with the Spanish patrol ships. His exploits in Cuba made him a very popular fellow. But they finally seized the three friends in Key West and were preparing charges against Broward and his crew. When war was declared on Spain, and instead of returning home in chains, he returned as a hero. Broward was elected to the State House of Representatives in 1900 and won the governorship in 1904. He waged a populist campaign, lambasting the powerful railroads and special interests and they in turn vilified him in the press with outlandish cartoons such as this where he's portrayed as a bloated villain holding up a little girl symbolizing incorrectly that he was stealing school funds to pay for his drainage projects. His most dramatic message by far, however, was his promise to pursue the drainage and reclamation of the Everglades as a way of transforming South Florida, which had far less population and political clout in those days and in Florida's economy in general. Broward devoted most of his time during his term to establishing the drainage district and began dredging the Everglades. Although there was public and political support for his drainage plan, opposition to the project gained strength as critics challenged the cost and questioned the feasibility of the undertaking, but they never questioned the environmental impact it would certainly have. Brower didn't blame the public, but pointed to his old corporate enemies and the newspapers they've influenced as the real culprits responsible 
for railroading his amendment, pardon the pun. During the 1907 session of the state legislature, Broward delivered an attack on those newspapers that he believed had used false and slanderous stories to convince voters not to support the drainage amendment. His primary nemesis was Henry Flagler, who controlled most of the newspapers at the time. He called for legislation to combat what he described as the scourge of fake news through appropriate punishments for newspapers, owners, editors, and reporters who intentionally publish false information. Now, doesn't that sound familiar? Broward had a large family that was devastated by his early death. He had been campaigning heavily in the last weeks of his run for U.S. Senator and had complained about pain in his abdomen. He refused, however, to go to the hospital and made every speech scheduled before going for medical help. By the time he got to the hospital, it was too late. He won the Senate seat posthumously. He is remembered as a man of great ambition and energy who fought tirelessly for the transformation of Florida's economy through the drainage and reclamation of the Everglades. At every speech he gave for running for governor, he would clutch a roll of geological reports and shout out, all you have to remember is water runs downhill. Yours truly shaking hands with the mayor of Fort Lauderdale on Fort Lauderdale History Day. As a historical speaker, I gave an hour-long presentation on Governor Broward at the Fort Lauderdale Historical Society with the encouragement and assistance of Ellen Ferrelli, who was the director at the time. Napoleon Bonaparte Broward lived in an era where people were not remotely concerned about having any effect on the environment, where it appeared that there was a limitless supply of natural resources. States were in the process of expansion by either ridding themselves of water or by bringing it into their states. On our last segment, on the Everglades, we will talk about a lady who begins to see the threat imposed by tampering with our beloved Everglades. <laughs>